Can I just say, I am obsessed with this. This is the only thing that's bringing me happiness at the moment. And I've never been a monster girl before, but diet. No, that's problematic. Diet of champions. I have a bit more serotonin today because I put up the posters in my room. I feel like that maybe there's been a lack of videos, but I'm just feeling, sorry. I'm just feeling a bit burnt out or like I'm not interesting. My impending irrelevance is looming in the background and I'm like very, I'm consciously aware of it. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should just quit. Maybe I should just run away and delete everything. So I was just gonna do a Q&A &A because I can't think of anything else to do. Stop talking shy, right. So the first one is what is one quality in a friend or a partner that you seem to always be drawn to? I really love a person who's like very uniquely themselves. I get, I'm very repulsed by people who are like kind of shapeshifters, if that makes sense. You know, people who mold themselves into people depending on who they're surrounding themselves with. That's not me having like an indiv individualistic complex either because I understand that like sometimes I grab bits of my personality that I like from like you know characters and films and stuff but I mean in terms of like constantly shape-shifting depending on their social situation. So the people that I am drawn to are like so unapologetically themselves and then like usually funny or like wit has a good sense of humor so like laughs a lot. What are your tips for feeling motivated in life during these COVID times? I think it's so important to not steep yourself in guilt and shame because usually when I'm feeling unmotivated, the only issue with me feeling unmotivated because I don't think there's actually an issue with it, especially because I'm self-employed. But if anyone is watching this like and you lacking motivation, what makes it worse or mo makes it perpetually worse or exacerbated in terms of like your inner turmoil is that you're making it worse by allowing yourself to feel guilt or shame because of it. It's obviously really really hard to feel ambitious and motivated or to like keep going on during a time like this because you don't feel like there's anything to look forward to and you know there's just like the whole unknown of the world falling or collapsing around you. The, the number one tip is to not feel any guilt or shame. I usually allow myself to like have a nap and then set yourself a time when you do have to start work because you know sometimes if you have executive procrastination if you start off your morning and you're like oh I feel a bit shit today, I don't feel good, I feel tired, I feel a bit sick. You tend to like ride off the whole day what I've been doing with myself now is allowing myself maybe to have a lie-in for a few hours allow yourself to have a nap but then for the second half of the day you can work on the stuff that you want because sometimes that if I lose the morning I think oh well I fucked up the whole day now it's a write-off I can't do anything I can't do anything productive when that's not true at all you can just have the morning as a write-off and then start your work and halfway through the day instead of in the morning instead if you tell your 17 year old self something what would it be probably I don't regret anything because sometimes you can wallow a lot I know that people other people have issues with this as well. You can wallow a lot with like maybe your past mistakes or regret not starting stuff earlier, telling yourself to be more reassured. But I wouldn't be the person that I am now if I didn't have all those mistakes and go through all the things that I did when I was that age. I definitely wouldn't go back to my 17 year old self and be like, do this, do this, and don't make this mistake and etc. I would probably just be like, it'll get better. Everything's fine, like you'll be class, it's grand. Next question is, when did you get into all hippie kind of stuff and being interested in the environment? I'm not sure what the pinnacle moment of my life was when I got into hippie stuff. I'm still trying to embrace my inner hippie. Obviously it's a bit harder now because I'm living in a very capitalistic, city fast paced city so it's not very slow paced or hippie vibed or, or not necessarily full of love and peace all the time yeah it has been it's pr proving difficult to kind of do that and you know i'm not surrounded by love constantly because i'm still kind of building the foundations of my friendships here to the point where i don't feel 100 percent secure and loved all the time if that makes sense even though my friends here are fantastic but it's like i haven't had a prolonged period of time with them enough to bond and like put in the groundwork to feel love and i think that's what like being a hippie is about is like being able to feel love and give love to people. Is that like a real wishy-washy cheesy thing to say? Yeah, I don't know when I did. Probably probably at a very, very young age. Because my both my parents are very free-spirited, so it's probably pretty easy for me. How do you deal with someone calling your mental illness fake? Trigger warning for this part of the video. <clears throat> I had someone who I wouldn't be necessarily close with, but people in my life are really close to that person who said that I lied about my rape, right? This is like in the kind of the same realms as this sort of person, like just a victim shamer, basically. The thing about when someone makes accusations against you that you're lying, it's hard to defend yourself. Obviously my initial reaction was very visceral. I was gonna start a fight, like send him a big message, call people that were friends with him that knew me very well as well. But I thought he had to have such little respect for me in the first place. This person barely knows me as well. He's like best friends with someone who I would know me very well so that's why it like hurt me a lot because I thought they would stick up for me I don't know if they have or not they have to have such a little respect for me that even if I was to defend themselves they wouldn't take them 
take it seriously or change their opinion. So I would just be wasting my own time and probably making more of a big, big deal out of it than it should be. What I had to do was kind of like wait for things to pan out. And the only person that you can trust in that situation is yourself as well, because I was letting that get to me, even though I knew my own truth. I didn't have to defend myself to that person because I don't value his opinion. So it's depending on how much you value that person's opinion that's saying that you're lying and then also sometimes you might just be wasting your breath if you feel like you have to defend yourself if you do value that person's opinion maybe you should reevaluate your friendship or the relationship you have with that person because if they don't have enough respect for you to believe you or take anything you say seriously you should they probably don't deserve to be in your life in the first place what's your stance on religion and spirituality like what are your core beliefs okay i obviously i'm not very a very religious person and i would never be judgmental to any sort of religion or people that choose to believe even to in a religion except for christianity no i'm only joking protestant no i'm only joking i'm only messing i think the more you educate yourself in a topic the less judgment you have if you're not harming anyone there's definitely not an issue with it that's why i am a bit iffy about the christianity thing i mean like there it's a bit fucked so yeah i'd say definitely if you're feeling very judgmental towards any sort of religion or someone who believes in a religion educate yourself in it first before you jump to conclusions that's all i have to say but spirituality i don't think there's any like written rules for spirituality. I mean, there has been arguments to say that it is an appropriation of Buddhism maybe. So I'm gonna try and learn more about Buddhism, but the way I see spirituality is just like healing and doing good in the world. So I don't understand why, I think sometimes people just want to make an issue out of stuff. If anyone has any good bu uh, books on Buddhism to recommend, I'll leave them in the comments. How do you deal with making mistakes in relationships slash friendships? Love you by the way. Initially, I used to do this thing, and I know a lot of people that do it as well, as sort of uh, a defense mechanism of you doing something bad and you being aware of it and you like feeling guilt. Out of guilt, I would not uh, to hold myself accountable or apologize. I would literally just like the next few days be really overcompensating and be really nice to the person. So maybe like buying them a present. Like I know whenever me and my sisters get in fights with each other, we usually give each other the silent treatment and then literally go back to normal. It's the way things were instead of like addressing it and waiting for it to, or for us to build up resentment and for it to come out again. So the same thing goes for relationships. Whenever you make a mistake or feel like you've made a mistake, apologize and hold yourself accountable straight away so that you're not building up resentments for the other person. That is not a sufficient apology for you to just over compensate and just be really not overly nice to them the next day that's not the equivalent of an, of an apology at all i really fuck with an apology now it makes your relationships a lot stronger now, what's my favorite song right now i love weird fishes by radiohead and something in the way by nirvana how was your second oh, i'm getting bored i might finish this tomorrow i might be in a different outfit to be honest i'll probably be in, be in the exact same outfit as before uh honestly the second half of this video will be way more charismatic and coherent so and i might actually wear makeup because i feel a bit like i look like i'm dying anyway i'm just being really honest and raw with you guys right now my serotonin levels very low i thought that i'd be like oh, Next time I record this, I'm going to be really happy, high energy, and it's going to be a turnaround. Nope, guess again. My mental health is like, nope, you're going to be sadder and feel worse. So, I'm loving the background though. Look, I have new posters up. Uh, I'll do a poster tour when I do my room tour. How was your secondary school experience? I had a whole separate video. I remember when I uploaded this, I was, think I was 21. And I was like, I was different. It was hard for me. But now looking back on it, I think I was obviously just a problem. And I really value taking accountability for when you were in the wrong, but because I think that promotes growth and encourages you to progress as a person. I, now looking back on my secondary school experience, I'm like, I wasn't that great. I don't think anyone was though because you're very much influenced by your level of hormones. Not that that's a justification or excuse for your bad behavior at all. But I, and I wasn't the worst. I wasn't like a very mean girl, but I wasn't the best. I wasn't like necessarily a nice girl either. Yeah, I think learning from my secondary school experience because I moved school. So I went from like an all girls school, which I really don't promote. I don't support single sex schools at all. I think it's very toxic and just real archaic that uh, that still even exists in Ireland, especially when they're Catholic, when it's like supported by a religious organization. Yeah, I think I very much developed as a person by going to a uh, mixed school. I was like, oh, this is how you actually interact with, you know, men. And not that that made the boys in my year uh, better people at all. I definitely don't agree with that statement, that they somehow learned how to treat women better because they were in a mixed school. The second school I went to was a private mixed school, so very much, oh, I'm gonna get hate now. I always 
forget that people that know me in real life actually watch my videos, does that make sense? Yeah, I'm not saying that people from my second secondary school were well-equipped citizens in terms of like interacting with different sexes and stuff, supporting differences or marginalized people at all. Definitely not. But it was a step in the right direction in terms of like the difference between a single sex school and a mixed school. Yeah, so my secondary school experience was very tumultuous. I learned a lot from it. M knowing that and accepting that you're in, at one stage a bad person is leaving yourself room for growth. But as long as you actually learn from it and change your behaviors in terms of that rather than just like being like oh I was a bad person but I'm not gonna do anything about it it's better to just accept that you were in the wrong take accountability for it and then change your behaviors going forward I don't even think that answered the question really I might do a set whole separate video on it if I can remember properly because sometimes your memory can be skewed in your favor where you think you paint yourself in a better light than what you actually were so I'm gonna have to really dig deep and do a lot of shadow work on that you guys I feel like it could be a helpful video if I talk about that if people who are watching me were still in secondary school I, I actually don't agree with the institution of schools at all and what they uh, the subject matter they teach you and it's basically just building you up to regurgitate information and then work towards I don't know, that's a real bullshitty like bratty thing to say like I don't want to fucking work a nine-to-five obviously it's hard for people to break out of that system and I also I don't have the brain cells at the moment to articulate myself properly so I don't really know what I'm talking about Next one is, why is the same person always in my dreams? So I've been seeing a lot of TikToks being like, oh, it's a sign that if someone's in your dream, they're thinking about you. I don't agree with that at all. That's not, literally not true. There's no way for people to test that theory. There's no evidence to back that up at all. So I don't believe any of those TikToks that say that because that's just fucking bullshit. I have a recurring dream at the moment. Is this too personal to say? Nah, fuck it, this is like my diary. Okay, digital diary time. So I get a have a recurring dream that my ex-boyfriend's <coughs> new girlfriend always tries to like physically fight me <laughs> like tries to beat me up and it's actually it's terrifying I'm not gonna lie it's really scary and I don't know what the hidden now there is I do believe that there's loads of hidden me meanings in dreams I don't have a degree in psychology so I don't actually know what they are exactly but I know that there is a significance in whatever you dream about a lot of nightmares is derived in like your subconscious trying to figure out if it's like worst case scenario what the solution is I know that's why people have nightmares because it's like if this were to happen to me how would I approach the situation the situation and like your subconscious figures it out for you and comes out in your dream that's that's why there's whack, like a lot of your dreams are whack sometimes so i suppose my subconscious is preparing me for when if i ever come into contact with her is she gonna try I, my obviously understanding of it is that she's gonna try beat me up for some reason even though she has no reason to i think my brain is just like everyone hates you she's gonna try kill you if she ever sees you yeah, I'm so sorry. If anyone knows her, like, don't tell her this because it's gonna be really creepy. Is it creepy though? No, I can't. I can't control how what I dream about. Anyway, so I don't know what the significance of that is. Like, what does that mean? If anyone can tell me, there's no animosity towards this person or my ex. Like, I actually wish I wish them the best. I I think I was holding on to a lot of resentment for a long time because there's nothing really else to do in lockdown. I was like looking for someone to blame for my emotional turmoil. But I'm just like, you know, it's easy after a breakup to be like, fuck my ex, but. Actually, I wish them both happiness and love. Anyway, I don't. Is it weird to say out loud? Ugh, no, I've been I've been oversharing in every video I've ever put up. Anyway, so it's not making a difference. Like I do it all the time. Do you have any advice on self love? I feel like I base my worth on how my boyfriend treats me. I don't think you'll ever reach um, a stage where you fully love yourself. And obviously, you're gonna have a lot of moments of insecurity, lockdown. What I've noticed within myself from my own experience, being in London and me making new friends is like hard because I don't have any of my close friends here to base my worth off of, which I, which I was depending on a lot when I was at home. So if something went wrong, I would say I would justify it in a way where I would think, oh, well, this is ha not happening to me because I'm a bad person. This is just happening because an external factor i know i'm a good person because my friends are all really really good people and they love me for who i am but now being in london if something bad happens i don't have anything to base that off of like i don't have a stable foundation where i can base my validation off of or like reassurance from people because no one actually knows me that well and because they're all new friends so if someone started a fight with me and like made an accusation and was like this girl's crazy and a liar i would second guess myself and be like maybe i am crazy and a liar because i don't have any of my close friends or family here to be like no you're not and literally because i believe them i'm very much quick to believe my insecurities and my negative thoughts in my head if it's perpetuated by 
an external factor here. Anxiety riddled at the moment. But what I found is that you are not your thoughts. You don't have to believe everything that your the negative Nelly says in your head. That's not who you are, and you should try not to think of just because your your head thinks it doesn't make it true. So what I found is obviously journaling a lot. Literally talk to people. I'm very much. I think it was from being in the room on my own for a month. I keep bringing it up um, as if I act like I literally went to war. Like I fought in World War Two. Me being in that room on my own for two for a month. Yeah, but what I found is I yeah there was a lot of conflict resolution very that easily came to me because I was on my own. I was like I have to come up with the solution here because my brain was in like fight or flight mode. It's like you can either like wallow in, in a depressive state here or you can figure it out in your head. A lot of time to overthink things and stuff like that. So I had to base all of my worth on my own thoughts and my own like validation rather than anyone else because I literally wasn't seeing anyone else. And what I found is that I spent a lot of time just keeping it in. If I was feeling anxious, I thought that everyone hated me. All these like, you know, the classic thoughts. I'm not good enough. I'm a piece of shit. What helped me a lot is actually just saying that out loud because I think a lot of times when you're feeling anxious and feeling shit about yourself and then if you're talking about it to one of your friends, you're going to think that you're annoying them or being like, oh, I'm the burden friend where I'm like not fun to talk to anymore. But what you'll find is a lot of your friends are actually feeling the same as you. You'll both reassure each other straight away and then the thoughts immediately go away and that's the only good thing of having phones. I'm planning to do uh, a month off Instagram so everyone's prepared for that. You know, sometimes I do it on a whim where I just like randomly delete my Instagram. I'm doing it a, a, a planned month off Instagram because I just don't actually need it. And my sponsorships now come only from in, from YouTube so I don't act technically need Instagram for my job at the moment because I have sponsorships yet set up for the next few months where I don't, I can, I can afford to take the month off of Instagram. So I'm gonna be doing that, probably delete TikTok as well because a lot of it just is compa uh, comparison yeah it's like negative comparison and that's like the only thing coming from it and literally just like perpetuating my anxiety so try to spend time off your phone and talk to your friends that didn't answer the question at all <coughs> I don't have a boyfriend, so I'm not doing that at the moment, but I did spend a lot of time like basing my worth off if a guy was attracted to me or not. Doing the whole incel vibes for myself really helped me, and now I don't base my worth. And like doing affirmations to yourself as well, where you just constantly uh, repeat to yourself over and over again, it's not the end of the world if I don't have this person in my life. Like the only person at the end of the day you're gonna have is yourself. So if you just keep saying that to yourself, I think it will help with how you treat your boyfriend. But also don't be hard on yourself for basing your worth off of your boyfriend at the moment, because it is a really hard time in lockdown, because you don't have have any other aspects of your life that are like thriving or you don't have like a, a necessarily good social life so you might be basing all of your um worth off how much your significant other treats you which is like a normal response if you literally can't see anyone else so don't be hard on yourself and be like oh i'm being too codependent on my boyfriend like that will go away when lockdown's over so i wouldn't worry it's literally just circumstantial jeez that was a long winded answer um anything that you miss about ireland other than your family now this is like a negative and a positive i do miss like being able to walk down the street and bump into people i know but i, I suppose that'll come over time once i spend a lot of time here or living a bit long living here a bit longer like going into town in Dublin is literally first of all there's an anxiety around knowing that you will but like you will bump into someone you know if you're feeling shit about yourself because I feel like any time I was in Dublin the past few months before moving I literally was on the verge of tears all the time so I was scared that I was going to bump into someone and just be really awkward or be really rude and they'd hate like that would be the lasting impression that I'd give them the most recent experience you have with someone doesn't equate who they are as a person it's all your experiences put together but yeah I I do miss like if I went into town though as well even on my own and I, I didn't know if anyone was free I didn't ever have to like text my friends if someone was free someone would end up coming into town anyway and I'd probably bump into someone so then I could hang out with someone so it's an element of feeling like less isolated but here if I there it's like total anonymity like I I literally walk around in my pajamas all the time and crocs because i'm just like i will n literally not see anyone i know ever which is like has its positives too because like i don't care about leaving the house looking like i literally put up videos of me looking like this so it doesn't really matter and just having like my favorite places because uh, i obviously moved here during lockdown so i haven't built up a rapport with the like localities of the place that i live like where is my favorite place to get coffee or like go for brunch because nothing is open obviously you can get takeaways but it's not the same so that's like the only thing i miss but that will also come in time when i am able to live here when stuff is open 
uh, how do you make friends in your 20s? Social media is a very good tool, I suppose. I'm just, I think I'm lucky because I give off, obviously because I overshare in the internet and stuff, I'm already seen as kind of an approachable person. I think, anyway, that's my own understanding of how I've made friends recently because I feel like it's I'm easy to uh, talk to because I give off the I'm friends with everyone vibes. If you're not like in normal social situations, I would just text people on Instagram if you both follow each other, reply to their stories, ask them where they got something. If you have stuff in common, you can talk about that, like give each other, I've made so many internet friends by just like texting people. Oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna start crying. How to be kind to everyone, even when you feel hard done by. Yeah, I feel like I sometimes I have internal visceral responses to things if I'm very angry, but the best thing to do is wait a while before you react to anything. If you have like really reactive responses, I usually just like write down stuff. Like if you're the only person who's gonna be seeing the inside of your journal, obviously I don't know if anyone else is gonna be. I'm always so paranoid that someone's gonna read my journal because the stuff in there is literally so embarrassing. But you have to remember that you're you're the only person who's gonna read it. Like it's, it's so homophobic if someone reads your journal. Like I see that as the worst thing that anyone could do to you. So if you feel like angry at something or if soon as you write it down, you feel so much better and you'll be able to be nicer to everyone and feel like go toward, go forward with less judgment towards others. That's been like the greatest tool. So if you're like mad at someone, write them a letter and never send it. After rereading the letter as well, you'll realize like everyone makes mistakes, even yourself. Like I am can be a shitty person as well sometimes. So then I'm like more understanding when someone is doing something bad to me. Now, not to say that I'm like a perfect person. I still hold on to anger a lot of the time. I have, yeah, just gotten better at like writing down stuff when I'm mad at people. Uh, what's your 2021 goals probably just to look, like look after myself better make new friends be kinder to myself yeah that's pretty much it they're pretty achievable as well i wouldn't have any like career goals because everything is like going to plan already so i'm not like well yeah i kind of yeah i want to sell a few of my screenplays that's probably a goal but like that's kind of boring. I don't know if anyone is interested in that. I was debating whether to turn, like make one of my screenplays into a film myself, but I just know that <laughs> I'm just like really, really scared of criticism in terms of that because my screenplays are really personal to me. Like they're all embellishments of experiences that I've had in my own life. And I use people that I know, but not necessarily that I have a strong relationship with. I base characters off them. So I don't, I'm scared of people reading into a character that I've written about and being like, I don't know if this is about me or not, but I kind of want everyone to have that emotional reaction if they I ever were to see something that I've made. What was that? In a I'm actually not making any sense. Best ways to look after yourself during a depressive episode. Um, talk to people. I tend to isolate myself a lot, which was easy when I was living on my own. But now I have two great housemates that like we all cry together so it's brilliant and you feel much better after call your mom go for a walk sometimes it can be hard to motivate yourself to do that though as well yeah and go easy on yourself as well like i sometimes get real mean to myself if i don't feel up for doing any work and i'm like i'm a piece of shit i'm a piece of shit but give yourself like half the day to watch movies that you've been wanting to watch and then you'll feel much better about yourself because like you're allowing yourself the time to feel sad rather than making yourself feel guilty about being sad if that makes sense clean your room it can be hard to motivate yourself to do all these things as well but they're all the things that i do sometimes it takes me a day to get out of it but sometimes it takes me like a week which is really hard because you're like i wish i was able to just get my shit together and continue with all my work but sometimes yeah it can just be a lot harder but just the most important thing is to give yourself time and remember that the situation that we're in now, like I've probably said it like five times in this video, we're in a pandemic Levada right now. So yeah, just to remember that, like it's literally a really, really hard time and you wouldn't be feeling this if the world was functioning as normal. Which language would you like to speak? I would love to be fluent in Irish. Like that's literally the only thing. I'm so patriotic since I've moved here. Like I would love to be able to speak fluent Irish because I think that's also so hot. Do you still plan on living in a big house with your sisters one day? Yeah. Well, my goal is like eventually after I'm finished, have all my big fish to fry here. We'll move back to Ireland at some stage. Not sure where exactly in Ireland, but I would love to be, because it, my understanding of like being a successful person or wanting to be perceived as a successful person is like, I chewed up this city and now moving on to bigger and better things, which is just like not an accurate representation of fulfillment. And I think the way I see success is, is like being surrounded by people that you love like literally nothing else. I would love after, obviously at the moment, I'm very I'm like hungry for all the things that I want to succeed and I can't do them anywhere else other than here. So after I do that, all my things, all my little things, the goal is like to buy a house and that for me and my friends to live in. And my sis Ellie always says to me, she's like, oh, but when you get older, like you want to have your own private personal space and like be more on your own. And that's why people couple off and like live in their own spaces and their own nuclear families. And I still don't have that feeling. I thought it would come to me eventually, but I still just want to be like living with, in a big house with my friends 
family. So hopefully if they're willing to do it, I mean, free rent. But I always say that to my friends, I'm like, I will buy us a big house to live in. Loads of dogs, rescue chickens, vegetable patch, industrial hemp, hemp farm. I tried to film a video about me talking about starting my own commune and starting an industrial hemp farm and like the benefits of hemp. But again, like sometimes I start videos and I, I lose the brain power halfway through. I have that clip. I don't know if I can, I'll insert it in a different video where it's like, not meeting up the minutes, if that makes sense. I won't leave it in this one, but it will be coming in the future because it's actually valuable information, but I just think it's very scatterbrained and not actually making, I don't think I'm forming coherent sen sentences in it. Anyway, girls, a million dollar idea. Don't come for me. But yeah, a really good investment is industrial hemp, if anyone was wondering. That's like the only thing I know about stocks and stuff. Like a really good stock to invest in is industrial hemp. Do you feel comfortable in your skin? What? do you do to accept hashtag slash love your body? I've been really struggling with this the last while, like which is probably, I don't, actually haven't said this out loud yet, but if you've noticed I like don't get changed out of my tracksuit that often because I literally, I'm like when I look in the mirror, I'm like, that's not my body. Like that's not what I look like. Uh, it's been fucking me up, but I don't have any tips to be honest with you. But I do think it's just because of lockdown. I have nothing else to think about. So I'm just like, oh, let's start hating myself instead. My brain's like, oh, nothing else is stimulating you. You're not getting enough social interactions. Let's just start hating yourself. I, I know I'll figure it out. My subconscious in my dreams will be like, this is what you're gonna do. When I read out some of my dreams, I don't wanna say any ones that like include other people that I know because they'll be like, what the fuck are you doing? I feel like people think I'm a crazy witch if they show up in my dreams. Like that's not me doing witchcraft. Like that's just, like, that just happens. I would love to know if anyone ever had a weird dream about me. I wonder what they had to be thinking about that day for me to show up in their dream. Yeah, this is one that I had the other night. I was running some sort of toddler camp I ran and then I ran into the owners of Nomo in Galway. Nomo is like this chocolate brand. I don't even think they're based in Galway. I think it's a UK brand in an art shop and it was the art shop the you know the craft center in spittle it was there and had the idea of doing a collab on a chocolate bar okay go off queen yeah i'd love to do that i wanted funding because i was running a running a daycare center but they said because i needed to look after animals to which they gave cora and to test if I was good enough to like r look after animals. They gave Cora a test animal toy and we were on a podium giving a speech and Cora threw it over the podium. So then I lo obviously lost the funding. Next one is how do you know if you're in love? What I've realized recently is the anxious like butterflies feeling in your stomach is usually infatuation. And then if you feel a secure, like obviously it's depending on like your relationship stability and also your own personal insecurities. But if you've lost that kind of like butterfly feeling, I think that you are in love with them. But that's what it is for me. I think it's, it, it uh, differentiates between each person. But for me, it's like someone that I feel safe contacting, like calling at any hour of the day and just like total security and you wanting to do stuff for them and like how they're feeling affects you. So like if they're sad, it makes you feel sad as well and you wanting them to be happy. And I don't think like, codependent relationships is like when you are depending on your happiness for each other. But I think that in a healthy relationship, the two of you encourage happiness, but it's not dependent on your happiness, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know, I haven't fi really figured it out. I'm not an expert, to be honest. Do you have any tattoo regrets? Kind of all of them, to be honest. Like sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, I wish I was actually just a clean slate. But like at the same time, I love them because each of them represents like a, a period in my life. I don't really like the, the TV one. I just think it's really big. Like, it's real obnoxious, even though it's like the Extinction Rebellion thing, but I, I just think it's too big. Or maybe I just hate the position of it. Ugh, I don't know. No, I don't know. I go through phases. That's all of them, girls. Fuck it. I'm actually proud of myself that I finished this video. I hope everyone has a great day. If you've ever been in your dream, let me know. Hopefully that was useful information also. I also wanna say thanks for everyone being so supportive all the time. Sometimes I, um, when I'm trying to detach and not be on my phone, I neglect answering comments or like even comments on my Instagram, which like looks really stuck up of me, but it's like me trying not to be on my phone all the time. But that's probably like the most important interactive thing that you could do with the people that support you all the time. And yeah, I'm just really happy that people still are interested in what I have to say. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me, but. So thanks again for always being really nice to me. I never actually get hate comments that much and it's very good. Now I've jinxed myself now. Now I'm gonna get a lot of trolls on this video. Sending loads of love and positivity to everyone. Here's a little hug. Hugging yourself is actually kind of a buzz. Okay, bye.